This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 5, Solutions of Linear Systems. Our objectives for this lecture are to interpret the row-reduced augmented matrix for a linear system to understand the system's solutions, identify basic and free variables for a linear system, determine whether a linear system is consistent or inconsistent, and determine whether a linear system has no solutions, one unique solution, or infinitely many solutions. Let's recall the definition of solution that we learned back in lecture one. A solution of a system of linear equations is a value for each variable that makes each equation true. A system could have no solutions, one unique solution, or more than one solution. Recall also from our row reduction process that our row operations are reversible. That means that when we perform row operations on our linear systems, the solutions are preserved. Any solutions that exist for the reduced system must have also been solutions of the original system. So that means that we can row reduce an augmented matrix and use the resulting echelon form to identify the solutions of the original system of linear equations. So for example, let's suppose that we wanted to find the solutions of this system of linear equations. Our first step is to write the augmented matrix corresponding to that system of equations. Remember that in this augmented matrix, each row represents one of our original equations. We had three equations, so we have three rows in our matrix. Each column represents the coefficients of the variables, except the final column, which represents the numbers on the right-hand side of the equal sign. The first column represents the coefficients of x1, the second column represents the coefficients of x2, etc., and the last column represents those numbers on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Our next step is to row reduce that matrix using the process that we learned in the previous lecture. This is the reduced echelon form of that augmented matrix. Finally, we write the system of equations that corresponds to the reduced matrix. Notice how much simpler these equations are compared to our original system of equations. Once we have our reduced system of equations, we can identify the basic variables and the free variables. The variables that correspond to pivot columns are called basic variables, and the variables that correspond to the non-pivot columns are called free variables. You can see these variables highlighted here, and notice that each basic variable appears only once, whereas the free variables can appear multiple times. Now we can write the general solution of this system of equations by solving each of these simplified equations for that basic variable. The first equation contains the basic variable x1, so we solve that for x1 and get x1 equals 9x3 plus 4. The second equation contains the basic variable x2, so we solve that for x2 to get x2 equals negative 3x3 minus 1. x3 is a free variable, so we simply write x3 is free. And finally, the third equation contains the basic variable x4, and it's already solved for x4, so we just copy that over and write x4 equals negative 7. Now we can use this general solution to generate specific solutions of the original system of equations. For example, if we choose x3 equals 0, then this generates the solution 4, negative 1, 0, negative 7. If instead we choose x3 equals 10, then we plug those values into our equations and our general solution to get the specific solution 94, negative 31, 10, negative 7. And as another example, if we let x3 be negative 1, that gives us the solution negative 5, 2, negative 1, negative 7. Whenever we have one or more free variables, any value of those free variables will generate a specific solution to our system of equations. So when we have a free variable, that means we're going to have infinitely many solutions of our system of equations. So here's the step-by-step -step process that we follow for finding the general solution of a system of equations. First, we set up the associated augmented matrix. Second, we use row operations to find the equivalent reduced echelon form. Third, we write those equations corresponding to that reduced matrix. And then we solve each equation for the basic variable. Remember that each basic variable will only appear once, and each equation will only have one basic variable in it. So whichever that basic variable is, we solve that equation for that variable, and that will generate the general solution. When a system of equations has no solutions at all, we say that it is inconsistent. But if the system of equations has any solutions, whether one unique solution or more than one solution, then we say that that system is consistent. Sometimes that's all we will care about. Sometimes we'll only really be interested in whether a system of equations has solutions or not, whether it is inconsistent or consistent. If the system is consistent, then we might ask whether there's one solution or more than one solution. And echelon form, not necessarily reduced echelon form, is enough to answer these questions. 
we don't need reduced echelon form to characterize the solutions to tell whether there are zero, one, or many solutions. So for example, here's a system of equations, and we might want to know whether this system is consistent. In other words, does this system have any solutions at all? We could set up the augmented matrix corresponding to this system, and then we could row reduce it. And let's say that this is the matrix that we get when we row reduce, not a reduced echelon form, but simply an echelon form. What could we say based on this echelon form about the solution set of the original system? Well, you might notice that that fourth row corresponds to the equation 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 equals 4, which in other words is the equation 0 equals 4. Since 0 doesn't equal 4, that means that this reduced system of equations has no solutions. There's no values that you could plug in for x1, x2, x3, and x4 to make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. And so that means that the reduced system has no solutions. But again, because our row operations are reversible, this means that the original system of equations also must have no solutions, also must be inconsistent. And so in fact, all we need to know to characterize our solutions of our system of equations are the pivot locations in our augmented matrix. If there's a pivot in the last column of that augmented matrix, like there was in the example that we just saw, then the system of equations is inconsistent, or in other words, has no solutions. But if there's not a pivot in the last column of that augmented matrix, then the system is consistent, it has one or more solutions, and there's only one solution, one unique solution, if there are no free variables, and infinitely many solutions if there are one or more free variables. Here's a flowchart that you can follow to analyze a system of linear equations. We first set up the augmented matrix and find its echelon form. Then we look in the last column to see if there's a pivot. If there is a pivot, then we're done because the original system is inconsistent. If there's not a pivot in the last column, then we have one more question to ask, which is whether there are pivots in all the other columns. If there are pivots in all of the columns except the last column, then we have no free variables, and the system of equations has one unique solution. If there is another column other than the last column that also doesn't have a pivot, then that means that we have at least one free variable, which means we have infinitely many solutions. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.